All right, so now you've seen some slides, you've heard a lot of talk about how this project is simple, smart, and professional, but if you're anything like me, you probably want to see it for yourself. Unfortunately, I couldn't get you all here in the room with me today, so I thought I would take a few minutes to show you just how easy the solution is to use. To start off with, I'm just going to go in and create a new project. We'll just call this project demo. And I can also go in and take a photo. Just take a photo there to represent our project. Click save. And I'm just going to click create. So it's that easy to go in, create your project, that Folger, that photo that we just used will make it a lot easier to go through and see it as we're browsing through our projects. Now that the project's created, we're going to go in and just start doing a scan. So you'll see down here at the bottom of the screen, I've got the button that says start scan. And I'm just going to click the menu beside that to select my scan settings first. So you'll see that it's laid out in time. So we've got four different options. We've got two minutes, four minutes, seven minutes, and 15. I'll just click on four. And then the very next thing that you see is two options. One is called standard, the other is called high sensitivity. Standard is what you're going to do most of your scanning in. High sensitivity is for when you have difficult objects, such as black or shiny objects at a far distance. You can select that option. It's going to slow your scan down a little bit to take care to capture those points. If I look down, I can see my number of points is going to be 58 million and my spacing is going to be five millimeters out at 10 meters. Now, if I was to change that to say two minutes, you'll see I'm going to get 12 million points and 11 millimeters at 10 meters. Be the next thing that I need to choose is images. So I can turn these on or off. And in fact, with them turned off, you'll see that the scan time at the bottom of the screen shows that that two minute scan is actually only going to be a minute and a half. But the next thing I want is images. So I'm going to turn that on. Then I need to just select my white balance. Is it going to be cloudy, sunny, fluorescent lights, or incandescent? In this case, it's fluorescent lights. And that's everything that I need to select. Now I'm ready to start my scan. You can see with the scan time and the images, it's going to take two and a half minutes. I'm just going to click start. Now, the lights have turned blue. It lets me know that it's starting the scanning process. And you probably notice it's not actually scanning yet. It's doing some strange movements. What that is, is the auto calibration. It's going through before each scan and making sure that the scan can be as good as the last one. Now this is a pretty big deal. This means that unless your scanner breaks, you don't need to send it back in for calibration. I talked to a customer just a few weeks ago using a competitor scanner. He said it cost over $9,000 to get his scanner's annual calibration. So he had to pay the $9,000 and he was out of work for a number of days. So having this feature alone immediately puts about $10,000 back in your customer's pockets. Let me tell you a little bit more about it. Scanning, I'm just going to move out of the way. So the scanner is weighing in at 5.8 kilograms. It's just barely more than a gallon of milk. So it makes it very light, small, and easy to work with and move around. It also makes it very easy to transport. Combined with the soft shell backpack, it's a very convenient solution for traveling to your job site. You don't have to check your luggage. You don't have to ship it anymore. The bag meets the carry-on requirements for most major airlines, so you just have to put it above your head and away you go. It's also got an exceptional IP55 environmental rating. The scanner is so fast it's hard to stay out of the way. IP55 and it's also got an exceptional temperature range of minus 20 to plus 50 C. In fact, the temperature range is so wide we had difficulty just finding places to field test the temperature. Anyway, so it just is going through and taking the photos now. You can see on the screen, it's downloading the scan data. <clears throat> okay, so the scan's downloaded. No, we'll just give it a second here to load up on the screen. While it's loading, I'll also mention that all that combined, the environmental, the temperature range, the auto calibration, that's what makes this a very strong solution that allows us to offer a two-year warranty. I've never heard of a two-year warranty for a laser scanner before. So this and the loan is another really big deal for this solution. Okay, so let's see if we've got any points here. So it's loaded some points on my screen. Another smart feature that this does is perspective has auto-aligned my scan data. So it's moved it so that the walls are aligned with my screen. 
makes it much easier to work with and interpret what you're working with while you're in the field. So it's just finished up capturing the images. Now I can move to my next station. I'm just going to grab the scanner and move it over here. And I'm ready to scan. Now you can see I didn't take much care in leveling up the instrument. As we mentioned before, the scanner self-leveling. So just to demonstrate that, let's just kick the leg out a little bit here. So it's clearly on level now. And I can start my scan. Okay, the lights turn blue. It lets me know it's going to go through, start that auto calibration and do my scan. So while it's doing the scan, let me show you a few more of the features in Tremble Perspective. So while the scan's going, I'm just going to tap in the lower left hand corner and you see it takes us into a station-based view where we can see all of the scan data. In this case, this is a grayscale. I can also go and change it to be something like color-coded by intensity, makes it a little bit brighter. And in the station-based view, I can do a number of things. I can go in and create annotations. Here comes the scan. It's going to jump out of the way, again, super fast. Here, let's say we want to add a new annotation up here where that target is. Just zoom in where it is tap on the target. I'll just give it a name of target. I could type in a description if I wanted to. Black and white target. I can also go in and take a photo of this. So just hold the tablet up, do a quick snapshot, and create our annotation. Now these annotations are great because while you're in the field looking at the scene where it's easy to interpret and understand what's going on, you can pick out these important features. So make sure that you don't miss them, that you pick them accurately, and it also helps on the office side that now the person processing the data knows exactly what they need to look for and they don't have to spend hours hunting through the point cloud trying to find these important features. One more thing, you see the scan just downloaded. I'm going to jump to my uh, screen here where I've got the scans. Just going to make sure that I'm showing these in scan color. And it's loading the points now and you'll see that it's auto-registering to station number one. So this is another super productive tool and another thing that makes the solution so smart. So you can see the two scans, there's the green one and the blue one. And up in the right, you can see the progress bar as it's auto-registering to the last scan. So right now it's going through and taking the photos over on the scanner side. While it's working to take the photos, the software's over here making sure that everything gets downloaded and registered. So we see we got our indication there that the auto registration was complete. If I just tap down here and look at my messages, I can see that it did the auto registration. So I can rotate around and look at this in 3D. Just to be productive, I can also move my scanner to the next station, start that scan. While it's scanning, I can be looking at my data over here. So I can rotate around in 3D can zoom in there, you can see where I put that annotation on the target in the upper left hand corner. You can see that both data sets have been registered to each other. I'm just going to hop back into the station based view for a minute, show you one more very important feature and that's the ability to take measurements right here while we're in the field. So opening the measurement tool, say I want to go and look at this doorway and I want to measure a height on it. I'm just going to change that rendering back to grayscale. So I just take a constrained measurement on the z-axis, I click at the top of the door, click down here on the floor, and that fast I've got a clearance on this doorway, I can get somebody answers right there in the field while I'm doing the scan. Again, if I jump back out here to my 3D view, I can see my annotations, and I can also see all of my data coming together. So you've seen the auto registration. Um, we do have some manual registration tools in here. I'll just kind of quickly show you that. If for some reason the auto registration should fail, it's probably for a reason. Usually you need to go back and get another scan in between the two. That's what's so powerful about the infield registration is knowing that your data will register before you leave the site. But you can also go in and do manual registration. So we've got tools that allow you to go in. I need to break the link. So it was already registered. I can click split view now to create a new link and there I just pick common points between the two different scans and that's easy. So let me see when we're done just need to export the data out 
We'll do that in the finalized step. That's where we'll refine our registration. We'll colorize the point clouds and we'll create high quality panoramas and we can export the project. The export file formats, if I do a quick drop down here, you can see that we support a number of industry standard file formats. We also support the TDX and TZF. Those are the scanned files that RealWorks and TBC use. And that's it to the solution. So you can see that it's clearly a simple, smart, and professional solution. Now, after a number of customer interviews and doing some demos and internal training over the past few weeks, we found out that there's one more word we should probably use to describe this solution. So the X7, along, or the X7, along with the perspective software, simple, smart, and professional, but one more word that you don't associate with work. That word, that word is fun. And that's pretty much it in the solution there. So thanks, we'll get back.